Big bus, big bus, no whammies. Stop! Oh, she, hi, it's me. Uh, everybody's favorite booby prize, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And I bet you're wondering why I'm sitting here all alone on my couch pressing my uh, luck. Well, darling, Elvira's a little short on cash this month, you know, and the landlord wants what the landlord wants. But I can't cover up for you anymore. Ha! He'd be the first to try to cover me up. But how is a gal like me supposed to make some quick money with only her God-given assets? Our bodies are capable of adjusting in ways we've hardly dreamt of. Whew, don't I know it, honey. I still got a cramp in my spleen from last Thursday. Now, I've played a few pricing games in my youth, but this week I'm going to use my melon. This one. That's right, Mama's going on the hottest and most difficult game show around. Who wants to bleed a millionaire? The game where your lifeline really is your lifeline. It's impossible. I know, right? I thought so too, but I figured with a little prep and polish and being coached by someone who will help me get ahead, someone who understands mind over body, someone who's a real brainiac. I'm only a head. And you're whatever you are. Uh, I'm Elvira, and you're the brain that wouldn't die. <laughs> you know, I figured I'd learned everything I need to get smart from a 1962 celluloid cell killer that was actually filmed in 1959, but languished in a pan for a couple of years till someone got it out. Kind of like this questionable stain right here. So, get your mind out of the gutter, wipe it off before you put it back in, and get ready for the brain that wouldn't die. I should have known he was as good as dead when they wheeled him in. You did everything possible, everything you could, Dr. Coyne. Everything. Everything except save my patient. Everything in the books. Now, Dad, do I have permission to take over and try things my way? The operating room is no place to experiment. He's dead. I can't do any harm. Very well. Corpse is yours. Do what you want to do. All right. 
Make an opening into the chest cavity. Apply 100 milliamps of current directly to the heart, then massage by hand. I'll handle the brain area. By yourself? By myself. should stimulate the motor area enough to innervate the heart again. Then he won't need any external stimuli. Keep away from the motor area. You'll paralyze him for good. Which would you rather be, paralyzed or dead? I'll try to play God. Some choices are not yours to make. When the obstetrician has to decide which to save the mother or the child, who plays God then? It's part of the game. The game? The human body's not a jigsaw puzzle to experiment on. Still playing it safe like the other doctors, hmm? Might as well save my breath. Keep massaging the heart. You've already lost your patient, doctor. I'm going to save mine. His pulse is coming back stronger than ever. It's unbelievable. Nothing's unbelievable if you have the nerve to experiment. I've been working on something like this for weeks. In your laboratory? I knew this would work if only I had the opportunity. You don't conduct experiments on people. You should be sure of the results first. I am now. Stop massaging the heart. Let's see if it can take over by itself. All right. Close up the chest. I'm allowed to finish with the cerebral area. How's his pulse? Strong and steady. Hey, you did perform a miracle. I may not approve of your methods, but I am proud of your results. Extraordinary operation, son. But it still is too risky, too uncontrolled. Saved his life. And the after effects? What about them? You've lost the urge to experiment, to explore. You don't explore on people. Before you put a scalpel to one, an operation like this needs testing under every condition. Over and over again. 
Rabbits, mice, monkeys, not people. That man who should be dead now won't think so. There's more to surgery than just being a carpenter to patch up walls or a plumber to drain pipes. Our bodies are capable of adjusting in ways we've hardly dreamt of. If we can only find the key. I'm so close now, so very close. The key to what? Complete transplantations. To be able to transplant limbs and organs. To be able to replace diseased and damaged parts of the body as easily as we replace eye corneas now. So that the new parts will join together as though they were born there. It can't be done. It can be done. By new special compound I've created, I'll do it. I know I can do it. Sure, sure, that's what you say. That's what I know. I know I'm close. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you, I could kiss you. Promises, huh? Always promises. <laughs> Careful, your father's liable to report us. <laughs> Stop the floor show. When you two are married, it won't be fun to watch anymore. Well, I can promise you one thing. Your grandchildren won't be test tube babies. You better hurry if you want to catch that plane to Denver, Dad. You know that medical convention can't start without you. Uh, Jan, you'd uh, better check about my reservations. Oh, yes, I'll call the airport. I'll be right back. Bill, the line between scientific genius and obsessive fanaticism is a thin one. Now, I want you on the right side of it. If I don't experiment, how can I hope to perform operations like the one you almost messed up? But I can't cover up for you anymore. The superintendent had it out with me. He thinks it's you who's been stealing those limbs from the amputee operations. So what if it is? I've got to have limbs for my transplant experiments. Well, you said test an experiment. Test an experiment. Yes, but limbs and organs taken from people. I've got to have them to work with. Sure, I've made a few mistakes. But I've learned from them. I've learned. Your reservations are all set. 3.30 take off. Well, what have you two planned for the weekend? Oh, nothing much. It's a quiet weekend. You sure you're not going up to the country house? You're always sneaking off up there. The place gives me the creeps. I, I should have sold it when your mother died. You can't sell that place. Well, I mean, it's nice to get away from the city. I can work without anyone snooping around. You spend too much time up there. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you both in a few days. Got to clean up and get out of here. Fine operation or not, Bill. You're walking on thin ice. But don't go too far. Oh, every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. I want to kiss you. Bill, you know, I want to get married. I can't stand not having you. You've been wonderful. I'd rather be a bride. In a few more weeks. And nothing will keep us apart. We'll be together. Um, these are those things you don't want guys to touch, but they always feel like they have the right to. Ooh, 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 remote controls. Right, um, this is that place where your mother always told you to stay away from because it'll make you look cheap. Ooh, DK Mart. Oh, oh, MG, you're right. Okay, okay, for the win. This is the stuff that gets everywhere after a guy has finished polishing his junk. It's dust. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I think I'm getting those skills to pay the bills. And if not, I could always be a supermodel. Or a plumber to drain pipes. Uh, yeah, let's hope it doesn't come to that. I couldn't tell you what I pulled out of my sink last week. Rabbits, mice, monkeys, not people. Right, I pulled the people out this week. Stick around, there's more things to pull out when we return. Hello, darlings. It's me, the maligned mentality with the lack of morality, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And we're spending an evening with the brain that wouldn't die. One of the movies that's a lot dumber than it sounds. So far, it's been very clear that our duplicitous doctor is doing something devious at the country house, and that his father is a bit of a prevert. 
And you two are married, it won't be fun to watch anymore. Yeah. Well, regardless, this doctor does fabulous work. I'm going to see him before my big TV game show appearance so that I look brand new. The new parts will join together as though they were born there. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what parts he's using up at the country house, shall we? Dr. Cordner. I'm so glad you're here. I was afraid you'd gotten away. There was a very important phone message that came to you. It sounded quite urgent. I've been looking everywhere. It was from a man called Kurt. He called from the country place, and he said something terrible has happened. He wanted you to come right out. Thank you. Well, you've always wanted to know what's kept me away from you so many weekends. Have you got the keys to your car? Haven't you ever taken me up here before? Because the things I'm working on don't need an audience. That telephone call. What about it? All right, all right. Hold off the questions. Why the mystery, Bill? What's it all about? We'll be there soon enough. You'll see. I've got to hurry. <laughs>
Right, for God's sake, open the door. I'm coming. Hmm. This house looked a lot bigger from the outside. What's happening? It's a terrible accident. I've got to save her. I've got to save her. What is it? What have you got there? Kirk, please. Sterilize the tubes and instruments quickly. What are you going to do? Aren't you going to have a look in the closet first? No, I can't now. This is more important. But you don't understand. For God's sake, Kirk, this is urgent. Do as I tell you before it's too late. I can't waste precious time arguing with you. Now I can do it for her. Transplant her to what? I brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. I can make her complete again. Only a madman can believe that she could ever be like before. Don't argue with me. I love her too much to let her stay like this. I'll restore her as before. You'll see. Realize. Can't you see? There's a pattern to all that lives. An order, an arrangement. She had a heart and a brain and a spirit was in both, not in one or the other. No. We give her a brain and a heart. Yes, and what of her soul? You say you love her and you can remember her love for you. Whoa, check out the special effects. All the skill and science I possess was meant for this. Life has a pattern. The whole pattern of my life is shaping itself to save her now. Then you intend to go through with it? Yes. Sleep, my darling. Rest and grow stronger. How long do you think 
think we can keep her alive under these conditions? 48. 50 hours at the most. Yes. And you really believe you can work a transplant on her? Successfully? Yes. Like my arm. Withered and deformed. Yours was an early experiment that failed. With her, I'm using my new adreno serum. Must work. I, I've got to go now. If the police or anyone call, tell them you don't know anything about it. I don't think anyone will trace us here because her body was burned in the wreckage. Yes, of course, of course. Look, Bill, before you go, do have a look in that closet. It's the reason why I called you up here. around there's more odd bodies and undead heads when elvira's movie macabre returns with the brain that wouldn't die oh hi there darling in my preparation for getting on a big game show and winning the jackpot i'm trying to figure out this puzzle it's a phrase mm, uh, can i see an s and can it be nice and tight <gasps> mm, let's see okay i'd like to buy a vowel uh, an o mm, mm, i don't think the o would be before the s that's an unexpected vowel movement. Okay, okay, I'd like to solve the puzzle. Post-mortem examination. That's what I'm gonna need by the end of this movie. <laughs> yeah! I'm on a roll, and so is Hetty, the disembodied dome once belonging to the doc's main squeeze. I mean, how else is she supposed to get from place to place? She rolls! <laughs> <laughs> Let's check back in with our sexy scalp and see what's scratching. Okay, this chick's dancing in the middle of the floor and like nobody's watching. Thank you. 
like Jane Mansfield? I sure hope not. Otherwise, this guy's gonna be in the same predicament.
Get out of here. Two's company. Three's a crowd. Who's to tell me to blow if I don't want to? This here's my dressing room, too. Remember? It kills her to see me make time. You're the only thing that's going to be made around here tonight. Honey. Eat your heart out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, uh, I'd better be going, hmm? What for? Look what you've done. You come back in with your two cents? Let me see you later. I'll make everything up to you. I swear I will. Yeah. Come on back later. I'll remember you. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. These lousy tramps. Once in a blue moon, I walked into a guy with class, and you messed it up. Ah, what makes you think you had it? He wouldn't have you on a bet. Says who? Says me. What's a guy like that want with leftovers for? Leftovers? Why, <laughs> oh, you cheap baby! Meow. Cat fight. You are going over to the street and she's leaving her! Let's go! Look, don't you ever call me Okay, okay, we get it already. It's a cat fight. Sheesh, why don't you just hit us over the head with it? Ah, so, while the doc is out trolling for meat suits, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back with more of The Brain That Wouldn't Die on Movie Macabre right after this. Welcome back, darling. It's me, that gal with the curves that'll rattle your nerves, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And I'm spending the night here with my dear friend, Hetty, or as you know her by her proper name, the brain that wouldn't die. You know, I figured her being all brains and me being all, uh, bra, we would make a great team to win on a game show. I'm brushing up on my game show skills and playing a game of squeal or no squeal. And I think I'm ready to open the case. Hello? Banker trying to make me a squeal. Uh -huh. 69 bucks? No squeal. <laughs> Let's open the case. Thing inside and be the thing out here. I 
brain still untouched. And his keeping me alive has given me a power he didn't count on. A power that you can feel across this room and through that door. Can't you? Together we'll wreak our revenge. I shall create power, and you will enforce it. You the thing inside. Be the thing out here. of miscalculation and often lose themselves in error and darkness. Behind that door is the sum total of Dr. Courtney's mistakes. He had no right to bring me back to this. Perhaps not. Who knows? But you should know that before he injected the serum into that it was but a mass of grafted tissues, lifeless. Just lay there, weighted down with its transplants of broken limbs and amputated arms. But with this serum, it, it began to breathe. It's impossible. Would you have thought possible what he's already done? Take yourself. He's brought you back. You live. Only a few years ago, all transplants were impossible. That's what he's been doing up here when no one could see his work. Yes. Experimenting with transplants on that. And on me. That he can tear away my flesh time after time. Test after test. My hopes shattering with each grafted arm he fastened to me. Watching it wither and warp. It's 
instead of strengthening. Do you see? He's learned from his mistakes. And you stayed with him, helping him in his grotesque work that he claims is for science. Was there a place for me on the outside with this? A world where eyes would look upon me with pity and people would turn away from me in disgust. No. The alcoholic has his bottle. The dope addict his needle. I had my research. And you guys have me. This was my life. And one night in the laboratory there, there was an accident. They had to amputate my arm. And he has used you to... I have no choice. He was my only hope. A surgeon needs both his arms, not just one. Well, you see, my transplanted grotesqueness stayed, and so did I. I live only for the day he can work a successful transplant to my body. That is why I stay. Transplant my head onto another body. Yes. And he's insane with the belief he can do it. But the tissues of my body would reject the tissues of another. Reject it as the foreign substance it is. The transplant would never take, it would never stay in place. My blood's antibodies would attack it as they attack any invading matter. Yes, but his new discovery, this new serum, may change all that. This serum injected into the bloodstream affects the lymphoid tissues. Here, in the neck. The lymphoids that provide the antibodies for the blood that attack foreign transplanted matter. It was untested, untried, till we used it on you. So, that liquid in the blood that's being pumped through what's left of me is what makes me feel the... <laughs> he may produce results he didn't ask for. Results? You mean, like this? Results what? Terrible than your arm of relative beauty. Results of power. Of magnitude. Power. What power? Can't you see that you're at the mercy of every element of the universe? How can you speak of power? I have a power. This liquid that he's pumped into me. My brain burns with it. That thing inside an iron touch. Want me to prove it? You can prove nothing. You're powerless. I'll show you how powerless I am. You. Behind that door. I know if you hear me. Whoever, whatever you are, I command you. You understand me. I'm only a head, and you're whatever you are. Together we're strong, more powerful than any of them. control in that room. There's nothing beyond my control. She's alive and I'll keep her alive until I find her a body. Uh, I can't talk anymore. I'm tired. I've got to go to sleep. And you, you didn't find her a body? Well, I've got to be careful. 
I can't afford to be identified as the last person seen with a girl before she disappears. Do you think you'll get one? There are many things left for tomorrow. Wow. I think they titled this movie wrong, because after that last act, I think I was certifiably brain dead. <laughs> anyway, there's more comatose comedy to come from the brain that wouldn't die, only on Movie Macabre. Welcome back to Movie Macabre, the hottest ticket in town. Seriously, these tickets were stolen. Well, we're chillaxing with the cerebellum de ball heady, the brain that wouldn't die. And Hetty offered to help me get ready for a game show, and I am accepting all her wisdom. Reject it as a foreign substance it is. Uh, don't be so hard on yourself, Hetty. I mean, I would never have gotten through that last round of the freakest link without you. I mean, I thought it was all goodbye, but no. Together we could have revenge. Nah, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how drunk you get. What's done is done, and what I've done is right. That's the spirit. <laughs> Let's all get back to the brain teasers here on Movie Macabre. you were looking me over. How have you been, Bill? Oh, just fine, Donna. I haven't seen you for quite a while. Too long. I'm still waiting for that call you once promised me. Uh, and you know how it is with interns. All work. All work and no play even makes for dull doctors. You're gonna lose that bedside manner of yours. <laughs> Say, how about a little side course in anatomy? Yours? Anytime. No, not mine. A body beautiful contest. You know, bathing suit models. Plenty of females on the hook. Your eyes will have a field day. Interesting. Well, why not? You're just what the doctor ordered. Come on, jump in. Uh, on second thought, I just remembered I've got to stop by my place and take care of a few things. It'll only take a minute. You don't mind, do you? I always follow the doctor's orders. Anything you prescribe, I'll take. That's what I like about you, Donna. Always so obliging. Going. What's the hurry? Hi, Jeannie. We're going to look for some bodies. You mean the contest? Yeah. Got any room for me? Oh, sure. Plenty. Bill, this is Jeannie Reynolds. Jeannie, this is Dr. Hi. Bill Corner. Hello. Hop in, but first we're going to stop off at his place. Sure. Well, as a matter of fact, I can wait. Now that there's two of you, we'll have to wait. Guess he thinks there's safety in numbers. Well, this time there is. He promised not to hurt you. And I promise not to hurt you. Body beautiful, hmm? Guess my invitation must have gotten lost in the mail. So let's bring them on. First, Helen Appleton.
nice little body I've ever seen. You have a second to you? No, another girl, figure model. You remember that one in school years ago? The one who had the accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doris, uh... Doris Powell. Yeah, she's still around? Few people see her nowadays. She just stays in her studio posing for art classes and camera books. body she's ever seen. The nicest body. Maybe this is the one she's got to be. I can keep Jan alive only for a few more hours. I've got to find her a body. to kill somebody, to rob them of their body. Do you hear me? Yes, you hear me. You know how Bill's egotism drives him on and on to infamy upon infamy. Who could ever be born of evil? Yet he claims his work is for humanity. To be joined to flesh, not your own. What's human in this? Of how you must exist locked behind that door. We've got to stop him. Get your butts back here sooner than you can say medulla oblongata. There's more of the brain that wouldn't die on Movie Macabre right after this. Welcome back, you little Hollywood squares, you. You've dropped in on the one and only Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And while my dear friend Hetty helps coach me to go on a game show, we are knee deep in, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I mean, we're waist high and, oh, we're up to our necks in the most mental mishap of movies, The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Now, to get y'all up to speed, I mean, not that this movie moves any faster than a crawl, the doc and his leggy lady are off to the country house because one of the doc's projects has a problem. Along the way, there was an accident, and the doc's chicky goes all Jane Mansfield-like and loses her head in a car accident. The doc saves her noggin and brings it up to the country house where we get the idea that he is keeping lots of spare body parts around. Now, the doc's out looking for a looker of a bod to slap on his old gal's head. Only thing, she just wants to be dead, and she hates him for keeping her head alive. Creepy, right? Well, let's get back to the head of the class. in an art class like that once before. And then the cops showed up. Oh, 
Okay, boys, I've had it for two Come on, baby, one more. Just one more, please. Another five minutes, baby. Time's just about up anyway. Okay. Say, Doris, would you like to have a drink with me? Just you and me, away from everybody? Some place where nobody will butt in with. You and I can really be alone. No, thank you. How about posing for me? Private like. I'll pay you real money. Real good money. The kind of money they don't throw at you every day. And for doing hardly nothing at all. I do my posing for classes only Wednesdays and Saturdays, 8 to 10. Yeah. Oh, but we can... Good night. See it all, mister. The show's over. Next time, bring a camera and buy a ticket. I'm not running a charity. You don't remember me, do you, Doris? Every guy on the make gives me that same tired line. I'm Bill Courtner. Bill Courtner. Long time ago, that fight. He almost tore that wise guy apart for making fun of me. After my accident. Look, uh, can't we go somewhere and talk? No, I don't date men. Because I pose like I do. Your mind works overtime. You get ideas. You're all alike. Oh, not all of us. I'm not on the make for you. Okay, so maybe you're better than most. Maybe not. I still hate all men. I hate them for what one did to me once. Have you forgotten? Well, have you? No, I haven't forgotten. Well, neither have I. I carry the memory around with me. But you can't hide yourself away here forever, posing bare in front of a bunch of neurotics. Listen, Galahad. I trusted a man once, all the way. What did it get me? He gets his head full of jealous lies and I You've get... You've got to forget what How happened. can I forget? I carry the memory around with me. <laughs> Am I so appealing to you now? Still so interested. Doesn't it make you sick? You don't even turn away from me, like everyone else does. To me, you're not ugly. I see only beauty in you. You have a lovely body and a face that can be made beautiful again also. Yeah. I've heard that song before. I'm a doctor, I know. My father's one of the leading plastic surgeons. If anyone can help you, we can. I know I can. I've been to doctors. It's no use. The scar tissue's too deep. No one can help me. Oh, that was a few years ago. Today, nothing's hopeless. Uh, we can graft scar and skin tissue that... Well, we can even freeze areas of the skin and sand away damaged skin tissues. The way you say that, that look in your eyes, I almost want to believe you. I almost want to believe you. Well, then start believing, hmm? Even if your father could help me, I couldn't pay him the kind of money it would take. Don't talk about money. He does a lot of work without any charge. Why should you want to do this for me? What's in it for you? I'm going to make your face beautiful again. Cut it off and give your body away. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. I have...
has been knocked around so many times. I've lost count. It's tough living with this. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. Well, because you've been battered around, don't go sour. You shouldn't lose your trust in people. Not all of us. I believe you. I want to. Do you really think something can be done? Only my father knows. Look, we have a country place just out of town. He's visiting for the weekend. I could take you there now for a consultation. You mean tonight? Well, if you'd rather wait till he comes back. Oh, no, no. Back. I mean, he wouldn't be annoyed being bothered with me so late at night. Well, you let me do the worrying, hmm? I'll do anything that'll help me get rid of this face. Oh, well, that's where I come in. Remember the last time I helped you? Where are you going? Who are you calling? My girlfriend. I want to tell her the news. Before you know what the verdict's going to be? You're right. I, I shouldn't talk until I know what's going to happen. Well, my girlfriend, she's supposed to drop in later. I'll have to leave her a note or something. Well, just tell her you'll see you later. Otherwise, she'll ask a lot of nosy questions. We want to be sure first. Just throw something on, huh? I'll be with you in a minute. Just tell her you'll keep in touch. I'll leave it on the table. She'll see it. Had to go out with old friend Bill Courtner. We'll call you tomorrow. Doris. Here. I'll leave it on the lamp. She'll see it, won't she? That's the first place she'll look. I'll leave the lights on for her. I have waited so long for this. So have I. your friend. While you feed yourself with hate, it prefers food. Your thoughtless, nibbling fear becomes you more. Yeah. What makes you think I'm afraid of what's in there? Or of you? A mere head in search of a body. People fear what they don't understand and what they can't see. What are you talking about? You're nothing but a freak of life and a freak of death. Why should I be afraid of a few knocks on a door? Last night you ran. You were afraid of what you imagined lay behind that door. I? Imagined? It was I who helped grab together the bits and pieces that were stolen from the hospital. An amputated arm, a leg, a torso. It was I who helped piece them together like a monstrous jigsaw puzzle. And that same medicine that he spent to me to activate my lymphoid tissues. 
Has he put it to that? No. No, on that he used an earlier formula. It wasn't as successful as the serum he's using on you. But it uh, was enough to allow the transplants to take. If your experiment is successful, then it'll be my turn. And what else has happened to it? You mean what else? Well, it's... It's mutated some, of course. It's changed considerably. Why don't you open the door? And we'll both see how it's changed. Listen, you... I warn you. You better stop pestering me, do you hear? I'm getting fed up with you and your insidious talk. He should have cut out your tongue while he was at it. Afraid? Afraid of whom? Of you? No. Not anymore. Not of it. Nor of it. Keeps it locked in there so that it'll be safe, that's all. Safe? From me? <laughs> you beast. I hope he prolongs your existence into a lifetime of agony. Then we'll see who's laughing at whom. You miserable fool! Damn! We're almost at the climax of this cranial catastrophe, and you can't split now. It just wouldn't be decent. We'll be right back with more of The Brain That Wouldn't Die on Movie Macabre after this. 
Welcome back to The Brain That Wouldn't Die, or as I like to call it, The Movie That Wouldn't End. Well, if you've been with us all night, you know that I'm practicing to go on a game show. And if you haven't been with us all night, well, lucky you. Sorry the bar's closed. Anyway, the movie's almost over, and I think I'm all ready for my chance at a million bucks. So let's get back to the, uh, action. <laughs> You and your father live here? Only on weekends when we want to get away from the city. This place certainly is lonely. Well, the further from prying eyes, the better. I mean, it's nice and quiet here. We can get away from the noise and telephones. Oh, I guess it is. Well, sit down, sit down. I'll fix us a drink, huh? My father should be back soon. You mean he's not here now? Oh, come on now, Doris. Do I look like a maniac who goes around killing girls? Now you've got to learn to trust people. You know, people like me, really. I'm sorry. I trust you. I trust you with my life. Well, I can't ask for any more than that. I'll be right back. You'd forgotten about me. Forgotten you? Why, Doris, you've become very important to me. Very important. I put a little water in it so it wouldn't be too strong for you. Fine. I'm not a very heavy drinker. Neither am I. Well, um, here's to your future, whatever it may be. I'll drink to that.
getting awfully warm in here. your body. A beautiful one. Soon it will be yours. Bill, you can't. Yes, I can. I want you as a complete woman, not part of one. Is it a crime to want to keep you alive? Is it a crime for science to jump ahead by years? This kind of thing must be done. It's over, you'll see. I've got to hurry now. The drug will wear off soon and she'll be awake. When she does come to, it will be your head consciously awakening for her.
happy day! <laughs> well, darling, the movie's over and looks like we made it out of final jeopardy. Everyone's a winner. Well, except for the poor schmucks who had to put this movie on their resumes. But seriously, I am ready to go on this game show and win lots and lots of moolah. My big brain coach has got me all smartened up. You wanna see? Let's do some flashes. No, I mean flash cards. <laughs> okay, I'll take anatomically incorrect for a thousand, Alex. What is the most abused and neglected part of your body? Uh, well, mine is abused, but it certainly ain't neglected. <gasps> if you were pregnant for two years, what would you give birth to? Whatever it is, wouldn't be afraid of the dark. Oh gosh, which of your senses tends to diminish first as you get older? Uh, my sense of decency? Oh, well, I'm ready as I'll ever be. There's a showcase showdown just waiting to be shown up, and I'm just the gal to show it all. So darling, next time you see me, I may just be a millionaire. Or I'll be flat busted. I mean, I'll be broke. Sheesh. I don't know. Till then. Unpleasant dreams. <laughs>